Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got part two of our DIY CMOS circuit building where we're making some gates from discrete components if you've not watched part one it's probably worth doing that I'm going to assume that you have for certain parts of the video so it may be helpful to watch it I'll put a link up top to that so you can have a have a look at it and then hopefully it'll make sense so without further ado let's go and look at um, some of the theory and then let's play with some electronics on the bench okay you may recall from the previous video that I showed this little circuit diagram taken from the 2003 TI data sheet for the 4011 now the 4011 is a quad uh, NAND gate this is just a circuit for one of those gates and the numbers in parenthesis um, on the pins are the corresponding numbers for each of the, the four gates just if you're wondering what that is um, now at the time I wanted to just show you the principle of the pairing up of the P and the N type MOSFET so you could see the complementary bit of CMOS um, let's look at the complete uh, diagram there because there's two more bits at the bottom the bottom left hand part is a a description of the uh, diode protection that exists on the input to protect the MOSFETs for, from static we don't need to concern ourselves with that at this point but the other bit which is on the bottom right there is the logic diagram and what we've got drawn there are t three inverters and a NOR gate so if we look at the three inverters two on each input and one on the output uh, we can say they correspond to those three bits of circuit uh, there uh, as marked by the yellow boxes and uh, those are indeed uh, not gates you may recall this was the circuit we built in part one of the video which is a not gate it's identical to those three bits of the circuit and the uh, gate in the middle with the um, the curved symbol on the left uh, is a nor gate or if you like a not or gate that corresponds to to that bit of circuit there and if you're now totally confused um, well you can get your head around this one here's the truth table for a NOR gate and for reference is the truth table for a NAND gate and you can see the output of a NOR gate um, if you invert it you get NAND so that's why there's a, an inverter uh, on the on the output okay so uh, I haven't got that many um, MOSFETs to be able to build a circuit that complex so we're going to build a slightly different version um, which looks something like this again we've got two P channel and two N channel MOSFETs A and B are the inputs and the output there on the right hand side the thing I've included are a couple of current limiting resistors so I don't damage my uh, uh, precious MOSFETs just in case I want to use them for, for something else in another video which hopefully I will um, and on one of those MOSFETs, particularly the, the top P1 on the right, the drain and source uh, connections are are reversed. Um, obviously you can't, uh, you've got to connect them around the right way. So um, that's the general arrangement of the circuit. On the breadboard it looks something like this and I've actually managed to lay out the, the transistors actually roughly in the order that they uh, appear on the circuit diagram as well I hope that'll make a, a little bit more sense so the two inputs are the two purple wires which are on the um, left of that picture and the output is the red wire um, going off to the right and I've obviously got some LEDs to uh, display uh, what's going on but we don't need to concern ourselves with um, that bit of the circuit from this point of view if you're going to build one of these that's the bit that, um, that matters that's actually the gate so without further ado let's go to the bench and see the gate in action okay here's the arrangement um, of the circuit there as we've just been looking at here's the four transistors making up the gate and I've got a couple of uh, push buttons here and some LEDs to indicate the inputs so I've got 1k resistors here which are actually tying both of the inputs high and pressing these buttons will take them low and then I've simply got another LED for the output here 
uh, with a current limiting resistor again um, to stop it uh, running away and uh, committing Harry carry. So let's uh, let's supply some power and both inputs are pulled high so I'd expect the two LEDs to light which they have. If you can see a bit of a, a ghosting image that's just an artifact of the fact the lens is uh, in line with the circuit board and um, so that's life. Um, so NAND gate then um, when both inputs are high the output is low when either input uh, is taken low the output will be high or if both inputs are taken low the output should be high so let's just try that so let's take this top input low and as we can see um, output has gone high that's correct let's try a second input yep that's the same and finally let's try both so both inputs low results in output being high so that confirms correct operation of uh, NAND as you can see so the gate is working nicely so I'm just going to reconfigure it now so we can introduce um, a square wave input at one of the channels so then we can then look at the uh, the time it takes for a signal to transition um, through the gate okay so now I've got the circuit reconfigured and I've replaced the top push button switch with an input from a function generator currently got it running at one hertz just so you can verify that operation uh, the second input is still attached to the push button and it's currently tied high if I take it low you'll see that um, disables the output as you would expect from a NAND truth table so we've definitely got that um, correct gate operation going on so now what I'm going to do is up the frequency well beyond what you'll be able to see from the LED so we'll go to at uh, one kilohertz um, have to trust me it's happening let's have a look what the scope seen so here's the scope view so we've got um, yellow trace is the input trace blue trace is the output trace so what I'm now going to do is just adjust the time base a little you can hopefully still see them there we've got definitely got input and output is uh, 180 degrees out of phase so we've got inversion going on and the reason I've positioned the waves like that is I'm going to just pick the middle line of the graticule uh, to take a measurement um, so it's roughly halfway along the transition between low and high for both the input and the output wave just so we can get some kind of idea so I'm now going to zoom in on that and so here we've got transition from low to high on the signal generator and transition from high to low on the output of the gate so that amount of time there uh, is the uh, propagation delay if you like so let's put some cursors on I've already positioned them so it doesn't mess about too much and so we've got 16.6 nanoseconds is the uh, time it takes for the um, signal to get from the input to the output of the gate the gate having um, correctly performed its function so just taking the second input uh, low um, you can see that just takes that high there but doesn't really make a great deal of difference to the time and I appreciate it shooting off the top but you get the general idea the position of that um, dip there is still pretty much in the same place so 16.6 nanoseconds is the delay through the gate okay just as a little bit of a comparison with my DIY gate here I've now got a, a real live uh, 4011 which is a quad uh, two input NAND gate and I've uh, I know I've left a load of inputs floating but just uh, wanted to have a quick check so I'm feeding the signal generator in to one side of the one of the gates I've got the other side of the gate uh, tied low uh, well, that's that green wire there and the blue wire is the output so looking at the scope view again we've got exactly the same input signal is the yellow trace output signal is the blue trace a little bit of a different shape so let's just put some cursors on and I've already adjusted it so we've got um, a difference between uh, a propagation delay if you like of about 7.8 nanoseconds so it's certainly faster than my homemade gate uh, which I'd probably expect um, but there we go um, both doing the job just fine okay and as a final check uh, 
that this really is a NAND gate. I'm pretty sure you're already convinced it is, but one of the reasons for, for wanting to build a NAND gate, as you've possibly heard me mention before, is that um, if you've got a NAND gate, it's possible to make any other gate from it. And one of the easiest, easiest ways to make another gate is to simply connect the two inputs together and that should produce a NOT gate or an inverter if you like. So I've just bridged uh, input 1 to input 2 here. So this push button will now take both inputs low. They're currently pulled high by a 1K resistor so if I press that button it will take them low. So assuming this is working we've got high and low. So if we take that low output comes on so we've got inversion going on. So we've made a NOT gate from an AND gate. So yep, it really does do the job. Well there you have CMOS NAND gates built from discrete components and then compared with the real thing, a 4011. I thought it stood up rather well considering it's just four transistors on a breadboard. So I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed exploring the CMOS circuits and I feel I've learnt something. I hope you have too. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video.